Well, the pros have it pretty easy, just riding 3,400Ks with support crews and a 200-strong bunch for company. Well, our first guest just helped his mate Shane Crawford complete a much tougher journey, longer, to Perth this week. It's a welcome to Dr. Mitch Anderson. Mitch, the welcome. ultimate welcome. multitasker, pro, Ironman triathlete, physio, doctor. It's a bit annoying, actually, on that side. <laughs> <laughs> was yeah, this your toughest challenge, though, of all? Oh, look, it was, um, it was physically pretty pretty tough, but uh, and there were late nights, early mornings, uh, and looking after Crawford... I mean, seriously, his wife has a full-time job. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, we, we did ride a long way. It was 3,605 kilometres. Really? I counted off every single one of them. Wow. Uh, and, uh, yeah, look, I mean, I was monitoring the whole way, obviously, physically, to make sure that uh, he was physically and mentally prepared for each day's stage. And, yeah, he, he, you know, he's a terrific athlete, mentally very tough. But was he physically ready? No, I tried to uh, encourage him to drop a few kegs, trying to explain watts per kilogram to him, Look but he was Mary's very resistant. Pretty oh, today, oh, he? he looks tired. Yeah, uh, that was... Um, That's no easy day. feat, though, for anybody, 160 or 170 a day. E exactly right. I mean, he, he'd shed probably four or five kilograms over the, over the tour. Yeah. I worked out he, he burnt 113 Big Macs um, <laughs> over the whole tour. So, um, you know, and, and close on uh, almost a million heartbeats it took us to uh, oh, wow. get from one side to the other. So, oh, there's the fence. And yeah. some pretty extraordinary money was raised for Breast Cancer Network. That That's must... right. The BCNA, uh, we, you know, we were wearing our pink socks and pink jerseys um, uh, the whole way across. And um, uh, I think you know, the local community supported us so well. It was really an amazing response from towns that really couldn't afford to uh, probably give us the five grand, you know, mm. with uh, towns of 30 people in them, that sort of thing. So. Day after day, we saw, um, you know, just travelled further down the road. Uh, was there a, a flat spot at any point, first week in, second week in? Yeah, look, it was my job actually to play the Dying's Deep role, so I had to make sure that he was... Uh, um, you know, supported the whole time. So I was actually very even in my temperament. Um, yeah. He had some definite flat spots. I think more mentally, there's a straight stretch of road uh, of 146 k's uh, at one point on the Nullarbor, and essentially uh, we had a block headwinded of about 30 knots the Horrible. whole time. Oh. Horrible. And he had a bit of an average day that day. Oh. <laughs> you know, there's a few wet sail eagles, a few emus, but apart from that, it was, uh, you know, it was pretty much just me going yap, yap, yap in his ear. So. Oh. Fantastic. What do you guys talk about or think about over that stretch of time when the scenery doesn't change much? Have we got a beeper on here? Because, uh, <laughs> no, look, we, we talked, um, talked about many, many things. I didn't know Croft that well before the journey, but obviously we know each other extremely well now. Um, but look, you know, I, we actually talked a lot about um, the, the the women that stopped by the roadside and yep. actually gave his stories because I think that was the thing that he struggled with on his on his run from Adelaide to Melbourne. That you know, people tell you some pretty traumatic things. Mm. So um, you know, we sort of we sort of mulled over the details and talked about how they might deal with it, but also had to help him to move on because you know there was people telling him stories every day about mm. you know awful things. So yeah, look, I think it was, it's a great cause um, to. To have raised, you know, I think they're going to be talking, you know, north of a million dollars. Wow. Um, the final tally will be announced next week. I was roped into one of his first challenges when we all rode from Melbourne up to Sydney. And, and as you know, with Croft, he's a man child slash Peter Pan, <laughs> just unstoppably enthusiastic guy. Yeah. But, um, you know, these elite sportsmen, when they put their minds to it, can really push themselves. They had done not much riding and they made the 900 Ks, which was incredible. Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, athletes can cross uh, across different sports. And I know that, um, that Gatesy, you know, crossed to the Ironman. Um, I think that uh, Crawford has the mindset to, to have picked any elite sport. He would have been elite. Um, obviously, he could do without the arms and the barrel chest for the, uh, for the Ironman, but Jason Shortest does a good job of that uh, in Ironman um, with a big body. But, yeah, look, he, his mindset is well and truly perfect for an, an, an endurance athlete. Mm. My mother's the chair of the board of the Breast Cancer Network Australia and so she um, and she's a breast cancer survivor and she said they're so overwhelmingly grateful that mm. someone like Shane Crawford with the profile, the personality and the, the kind of motivation does these things for them because it, it does raise the profile of support for their organisation and for the women who've suffered with breast cancer so it's terrific. Incredible. People really connect with him too. He, yeah. He's actually, um, you know, there's lots of roadsides where he would just basically give people a big hug. Mm. You know, and yeah. women, uh, obviously of all ages, uh, dropping a big uh, wet one on his cheek. <laughs> True. Um, you know, um, we almost needed someone with, with um, wet wipes um, in the bus sometimes. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Don't go anywhere with the, with the wet wipes. I know you've done something like 24 Ironman races, is that right? And yeah, set blistering. 30, is that no, right? No, you've got to update your CV. Oh, come 30 on, yeah, now. Sorry about that, yeah. With blistering bike times, Gatesy just rolled out and did a leisurely 9 hours 16 a couple of weeks back, which is pretty handy. Um, and what was your bike time? 4.32-ish, something, yeah. something impressive. Yeah. But you've even pipped that. That's quite amazing. Yeah, look, I had a really good battle with uh, Hank Vogels on the course at Ironman WA. Right. Um, we yeah, actually had a bit of repartee yeah, in the uh, press <laughs> conference where I said I, I bet him a slab, I'd beat him on the bike that I was doing the swim and the run. And I pipped him by about two minutes, I think. Yeah. And um, we've been friends for life now. <laughs> he respects you now. He, he's got, finally got his respect, even though I've got those crazy bars in the front, you know. <laughs> Great to meet you. Something for uh, after you finish your next training session. Thanks, Mitch. Probably only oh, be minutes Green away. Edge, a uh, uh, bit of vino there. Oh, terrific. And I, have a, I have a gift for you guys, oh, actually. Fantastic. Um, I thought that... Uh, You'd all like to represent BCNA and a by wearing some nice, uh, some nice fluoro so cool. pink socks. Thank you. Beautiful. Pleasure. Good on you, Mitch. Stick around Thank and help you. us oh. out with the rollers that are coming up next time. I'm sure you've done Absolutely. some hours on those too. Great to meet you. And pass on our best to Croft too when you uh, next speak to him.